Hey guys, what is up? This is Sayyid Hassan Ali. I am making a video today on cardenine and its skeletal muscles, uh, its effect on the skeletal muscle. Now, there's an overview of cardenine and the PP uh, PP Tor Sigma pathway, the PP R PPAR Sigma pathway that I've already made um, on overview of the cellular action of. Uh, of cardenine, right? Its cellular mechanism of action it actually acts on the nucleus, a receptor on the surface of the nucleus to cause the activation of the PPAR sigma pathway. But today, specifically, we're going to be talking, and that actually has impacts on multiple tissue types like liver, arteries, micro, uh, the anti inflammatory tissue, adipose tissue, muscle, heart rate, and also on the skeletal system. Um, but we're looking at skeletal muscles today, the impact of cardinine on the skeletal muscles. All of these are quotations from scientific studies. And the right down here, we have all the citations for literally everything that's we're talking about here on this channel. Um, and so everything I'm going to be talking about is from scientific studies. I don't talk about many, many details of the scientific studies. This is more of an overview video. If I find something interesting, I do go, I make more videos about it and go more in detail into the scientific studies, but you can find the studies themselves by looking up the citation 14, one, two down, down at the bottom of the document. I will be making this document available. I may, I think I may charge for it on Amazon, like a dollar or something. It's a pretty good document. It has a lot of good information in it um, but I don't want to charge too much for it because it's not like a finished ebook or anything like that so um, you can find this on Amazon cool so let's start skeletal muscles the effect of cardinine on the skeletal muscle in skeletal muscle PPAR Sigma pathway regulates fatty fatty acid transport um, and oxidation right so basically fatty acid transport into the cell and its oxidation in the cell um, and thermogenesis um, uh, within muscle tissue is also regulated by the PPAR sigma pathway and the formation of slow twitch muscle fibers. So uh, fast twitch muscle fibers are stimulated by like uh, heavy weight and also by doing less weight but doing really fast reps uh, really also uh, activates fast twitch. But uh, for a uh, slow twitch muscle fibers and their formations are activated by the PPAR pathway. Um, so when you take cardinine, you will increase in your slow twitch muscle fibers, um, which altogether result in enhanced endurance performance. Uh, slow twitch uh, don't get tired as easily, but they can also not move as fast or lift as fast. So uh, endurance performance. It is it likewise activates thermogenesis and fatty acid transport. Um, and oxidation in adipose tissue, uh, retarding weight gain. I like this term, retarding weight gain. Uh, it's very scientific, but it's also hilarious. It likewise activates thermogenesis and fatty acid transport and oxidation in the adipose tissue. So what happens is your adipose tissue and your muscle tissue are the main two like huge tissues that are going to be able to oxidize uh, f uh, the fat or fatty acids once they break down. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting a message on our work. Please excuse that. Okay. It likewise activates thermogenesis and fatty acid transport and oxidation and adipose tissue retarding, retarding weight gain. Um, so basically even in the, in the, in the adipose tissue itself, fat acid, uh, fatty acids will be transported into the mitochondria and they will be uh, oxidated. So the adipose tissue itself, where the fat is stored, will begin to oxidize it and oxidize it and use the fat and not allow it to just remain storing. So this retards the weight gain because the main metabol metabolic like hyper machine that uses the energy will be using it and the place that the energy is stored in the form of fat will also be oxidizing it. So this will retard hard weight gain is what being said here. Now GW5156 increased the running distance of sedentary and trained uh, cuming mice on endurance tolerance tests 
GW or carnitine alone is sufficient to improve running endurance of untrained mice even after only one week of administration. So a certain dose of carnitine was given. We're not talking about doses it's here because that gets too much in depth. Generally, after a review, we'll talk about dosages later, uh, maybe even in a separate video, but this is just telling you the benefit of it. So the running distance, they were sedentary mice. They were mice that didn't get exercise, and they were given cardinine for one week, and it improved the running endurance of the untrained mice. These mice weren't trained, and it still increased their running endurance. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so the next study says, interestingly, that in other mice line, Sedentary mice, four weeks treatment with cardinine increased muscle gene expression but not endurance, and at the same time, uh, remodeled skeletal muscle in exercise, uh, remodeled skeletal muscle in exercise trained mice. So it has a contrasting effect on whether the mice are trained or sedentary. Um, A four-week treatment with cardinine increases muscle gene expression, but not endurance, in sedentary mice. So this actually uh, increases protein synthesis. Cardinine will actually increase protein synthesis in mice after four weeks of administ daily administration, even if they're sedentary, but it won't increase endurance. Um, but remember, this is another mice line, so the genetics of this mice is mice are different from these mice. And at the same time, GW remodels skeletal muscles in exercise trained mice. Um, but but the 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 other mice, another group of mice, like a different group of mice that are being tested, who are trained, exercise trained, uh, it remodels skeletal muscle. Um, so I guess it reshapes it or something. I don't really get what they're saying there. Um, so the next study is previous studies demonstrated that changes in expression of gene regulated by PPAR sigma occurred already after three days. So three days of continuous uh, cardinine expression already change uh, cardinine. Uh, three days of regular cardinine administration already change gene expression within three days. Um, and of course, these are genes that were regulated the, by the PPAR sigma um, receptor. Expression of PGC1 alpha um, regulates the genes involved in energy metabolism. PDK4 is a mitochondrial matrix protein which histidine kinase domain and selective biomarkers for fatty acid oxidation and skeletal muscle were significantly increased by GW right so these are a couple things that were increased by by cardinine within three days through the expression of through pathways that were regulated by this receptor and the expression expression of PGC1A this is a really big thing if you study amino acids or mitochondria or even um uh, you know, uh, must protein synthesis. This is like the master, like good gene to activate. Um, no, sorry, sorry about that. I have so many things going on on my computer. It's like a big uh, P uh, ThinkPad P50, and I have, always have so much going on on it. Sorry about that. Expression of PGC1A alpha is like a really good thing, but this is going to be a separate video to go into that. So, but just know that this is a really good thing. PDK4, uh, which says here, a mitochondrial matrix protein with a histine kinase domain, uh, matrix protein. Uh, so basically, this is an expression of mitochondrial respiration. So when this there's more of this around, that means there's more mitochondrial respiration happening, which means there's more mitochondria. There's They're bigger in size and they have better function. Um, and selective biomarkers of fatty acid beta oxidation. So... What this showed is basically this is these are metabolites of when fatty acids are oxidized either in the muscle or in the fat and then they get into the bloodstream wherever you test they'll exist because they're they're in the bloodstream so these are basically metabolites of the fat, fatty acid oxidation process they're increased so what that means is there's more fatty oxidation going on it's elevated. 
Um, but specifically here it says in skeletal muscle. So fatty acid, uh, fatty acid oxidation in skeletal muscle were significantly increased. Um, uh, selected biomarkers of by GW treatment. And again, this is within three days. Three days of GW uh, will do this. Now, let's look at the next study. Three-week treatment with GW increased running performance of both trained and untrained mice. Um, Three-week treatment with GW501516 uh, increased running performance of both trained and untrained mice. Um, so there's two groups of mice. One is trained, one isn't trained. For three weeks, they have daily administration of cardinine. It improves both of their performance. Like training, cardinine promoted mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation and increased fat metabolism in muscle tissue. So GW, so they, I guess the, the ones that weren't trained, um, you know that that what effect training has on them alone. And so it says like training GW in, in the rats, um, uh, pro it promoted mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation and also increased fat metabolism in muscle tissue. This kind of seems like the same thing to me. I don't know why, why it's different. However, exercise increased energy supply by promoting catabolism of protein glycosylase and glucogenesis from amino acids, while cardinine increased fatty acid oxidation through branching amino acid uh, and ketone body pathways. So basically, there's actually a contrast between the way uh, exercise impacts the body and the way cardinine is impacting the body. So it's saying like training, GW promoted mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation and increased fat metabolism in muscle tissue. But there's also a difference between how exercise and cardinine impacted the body. Exercise increased energy supply by catabolism, so it broke down muscle, catabolism of protein, and glucogenesis, Glu gluconogenesis is when uh, when amino acids, uh, br br uh, when protein is broken down from the muscle, there's amino acids in the blood, and then amino acids are used to be making, um, to make uh, glucose. A gluconogenesis is the genesis of glucose from amino acids, uh, or that's gluconeogenesis, but it says this is from amino acids, so this whole phrase means gluconeogenesis. While, while cardinine increased fatty acid oxidation through brand chain amino So GW did something different. Uh, in contrast, uh, of breaking down muscle protein, it actually increased fatty acid oxidation, which means it used your adipose tissue as a source of its energy, not your muscles. So GW forces your body to use fatty acid and oxidize fatty acid rather than the catabolism of your own muscles. To and it did this, the pathway through it did the fatty acid oxidation is that it, it released branch chain amino acids into the bloodstream and ketone body pathways. So when you have branch chain amino acids in the blood, what it does, it increases fatty acid oxidation. So that's why you can supplement with branch chain amino acids and they have a similar effect sometimes. Uh, but it but cardinine causes the release of these in your body anyways. And then ketone body pathways, meaning the liver has a store of ketones and it actually it it, it it's the one that metabolizes ketones also so your liver um is making ketones cuz your body is running on fat when your body runs on fat your your liver makes ketones okay next next um next uh, uh piece of information like training cardinine promoted mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation and increased fat metabolism in muscle tissue so basically cardinine like exercise will produce uh make your your make your muscles more fat adapted the mechanism of gw effect can involve ampk5 um activated signaling pathway the findings of salvo do indicate that uh ppr Beta sigma prevents ER stress. Now beta and sigma, there, remember there's three, um, there's three uh, PPAR ISO receptors. So they're all forms of PPAR and they're similar, but there's beta and sigma. So these are two of the three. Prevents ER stress, uh, inflammation, and insulin resistance in skeletal muscle cells by activating AMPK.
so remember cardenine activates these pathways right uh, the ppar pathways um and so when that that cardenine activates them some of the effects is, is prevents er stress inflammation and insulin resistance in skeletal muscle cells by activating ampk um, and we'll, we'll make separate videos about what ampk is just just know that for now the ppar sigma agonist cardenine promotes changes in lipid glucose metabolism promotes changes in lipid glucose metabolism and gene expression in human skeletal muscle cells by ppr sigma and ampk dependent and independent mechanisms um so it doesn't say what the changes are which is kind of annoying so let's move on from that piece of information um promotes changes in lipid glucose metabolism. G cardinine treatment enhanced fatty acid oxidation in the skeletal muscle per uh protected against diet induced obesity um, and improved glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity um, so basically it increases fat oxidation if you're prone to get fat or become obese through through eating too much it protects against that like you can take coq10 for kidney protectives and nac for liver protectives this is protective against obesity okay so this is the last um, and it protects against insulin sensitivity and it's also protective of uh, type 2 diabetes okay I just heard the bell ring at my house this was the last one anyways I can't say a long goodbye I hope that was beneficial I'll expand on this please like please subscribe uh, please take the time to comment I will talk to you soon um, this is Sayyid Hassan Ali signing out bye bye